Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about Ableton Live's automation features. So automation, like the name suggests, is just a way to automate different parameters over time. And there's two ways to do this in Ableton Live. One is in the arrangement view, and the other one is each clip can have clip envelopes to modulate parameters. So in arrangement view, to enter automation mode, you press the A key. Once you're in automation mode, your mouse now controls the actual automation curve instead of editing the clips themselves. So now you can freely draw different shapes. So what this red line represents is the value of different parameters will take over time. And each value that you want to modulate has its own unique curve associated with it. To switch different values to modulate, you can pick from the dropdown here. So the first dropdown is the device, in this case mixer. And then the second one is contextual to the device and it's different parameters you can control. So for the mixer, we have volume, panning, speaker on, etc. If you had a different plugins here, like an echo or something, it would appear up here and then you can select the parameter down here. The other way to quickly select a parameter for automation is just to click on the parameter itself. So I can click on panning and you see that appears. Then I can click back to volume. And you'll notice if I click on panning, the curve resets and I can draw a completely different shape here. So each parameter that you're modulating has its own unique shape and you can toggle between those here. In the drop down menu, you'll notice this red little dot appears next to the parameter. This just indicates that there's currently automation there. If you want to clear a whole automation for a specific parameter, just press command backspace. All right, as a simple example, let's automate the volume of the track. So let's listen to it without any automation. Just a simple drum loop. So now let's say I wanted to change the volume of this over time. So the first thing I can do is select track volume from the dropdown, or I can just click on the little volume slider here. And now I can do it in a bunch of different ways. I can either draw it with the mouse by adding these little nodes. So every time I click, it adds a little point, and then the point creates a little node that you can flick up and down. As you hover the mouse, you can notice the values on the different nodes. So here it says minus 37 dB, 0 dB. So you can see that the value of the volume will change over time. So let's listen to that now. And then there's different ways you can change this curve. So if you hold option on a line and drag it, it'll drag it in a curved fashion. So you can get more smooth transitions that way. You can also insert predefined shapes, almost like an LFO. You select a region, then you right click, and at the bottom you can see insert shape. So I can insert a sine wave within that region. All the standard duplicate, copy, cut, and paste commands work here, but they work on the automation curve itself. So if I select this region and press command D, it'll duplicate the automation, but not the clip itself. So this is a really powerful way to edit your automation. There's also a cool feature where you can skew and morph the curve. So if you select a region, you'll notice these little boxes appear on the corners and edges here. It's kind of hard to see in the video, but basically this determines like a square that you can morph. So if I squeeze it from the top, you'll notice that the curve gets bent down. I can do the same thing from the bottom, squeeze it up. And I can also grab the corners, which will skew the edges and create like a trapezoid shape. Also, if you hover your mouse next to the curve, but not on the curve, you'll notice that the curve turns blue. If you drag at this point, you'll notice you can move the whole curve up and down and skewing its values. So if you wanted to create a quick LFO, for example, you can right click, create a sine wave. And if you want to squeeze the sine wave down, you can just drag it down here. And then I can move it up and then I can duplicate it. And now we have a nice LFO. And then of course I can go in the middle here and maybe make this ramp up a little bit here. All right, so so far I've been talking about the mixer automation parameters, which is cool. You can change the volume, panning, etc., even the send effects. But where it gets really powerful is when you start modulating different plugins. All right, so I've added an auto filter to my track, which is just a low pass filter. So let's listen to that by hand here. So now let's say I wanted to automate the cutoff frequency here. I can just press A again to go into automation mode, click on the knob that I want to control, and then you'll notice that it automatically gets selected here. So up here in the dropdown, we see the auto filter plugin appeared. And then down here, you can see all the parameters from the auto filter that you can modulate. So right now, let's say we wanted to add a sine wave here, then maybe here we'll add this little squiggly shape here. Maybe I'll add a square wave. And then let's see what that sounds like for the filter here. So that sounds a little extreme here. So let's maybe skew it up by selecting the whole region and dragging from the top. 
then we can quickly start creating some interesting shapes. I can hold option and create some curves here. And then I'll maybe bring up the resonance here so we can hear the effect. And like I mentioned, all the copy paste commands work on the automation and not the clip itself. So if you had a really complex clip in the background and you wanted to only copy the modulation, you can just select it in modulation mode and duplicate the modulation. So even if you had another clip down here, it would still follow the same modulation pattern here. And again, every parameter has its own automation lane. So you can really go crazy here. For example, if I click on resonance, we have a whole new clean slate here. So now I can modulate the value of the resonance itself. And maybe we're going to go crazy here. The other way you can change the automation is by drawing it. So you press B to enter draw mode, and then you can see this little pencil, and now you can draw it up and down. By default, it'll follow the grid, but if you hold command or control while dragging, you can get a smooth pencil line. The other thing you can do is record automation in real time. So if you have a MIDI controller or something mapped to a specific parameter, you can twist the knob as it's playing and it'll record that in real time. You'll notice that when you draw something by hand or when you record it in real time, you'll get lots of little jagged edges because you're recording like a human feel. If you want to smooth that out, you can select the zone, right click, and then you'll notice this simplify envelope button. This will remove some of the harsh edges and give you kind of a smoother curve to work with. So as I mentioned at the beginning, there's two ways to do automation. One is in the arrangement view like I just showed you. And the other one is that each clip has its own set of envelopes that you can use for automation as well. So if I double click on this clip, we'll load it down here in the clip view. To view the envelopes, just click the little envelope button at the bottom here. And then you'll notice that the envelopes section opens up here. So the controls here are very similar to what we saw in the arrangement automation. So the first drop down is the device, and then the second one is the parameter within the device. So let's do the same filter sweep, but within the clip envelopes here. So again, I'm gonna select the auto filter from the first drop down, and then the frequency from the second. And then you have a very similar type of curve here that you can work with, and you can set different shapes and parameters to control. And again, you have the shape, so you can right click, insert a sine wave. So now you might be wondering, what if we select the same cutoff frequency up here and draw a different shape? And then we have this other shape here controlling that same cutoff frequency. So the main difference between arrangement view automation and the clip envelopes is that the clip envelopes are relative. So in the arrangement view, you set the sort of absolute value. So if I move my mouse, you can see the value is in Hertz, which is the units for the cutoff frequency. Whereas down here, if I move my mouse, the units are in percentage. So here you're setting kind of a relative percentage. So what's cool there is that you can have two things in tandem. So you can have this looping clip envelope playing, and then you can have a global automation at your arrangement view, and both can be kind of playing with themselves and intertwining. And what's super cool is that in the clip envelopes, if you remove this loop link, right now you can make it so that you have an independent loop point in the clip envelope, independent from the actual clip playing in the arrangement view. So I can squeeze this down here and create a really short loop. So now even as the arrangement is playing the clip, the clip itself will be looping this shorter automation on the same cutoff frequency. So I can exaggerate this and create a really tight sine wave here and then close the loop on that. So now you can see that we almost have this little LFO running here, but here we're setting the global cutoff frequency. We're almost setting like an upper bound on what the values can be. And this can get exponentially more complex because each parameter can have its own dedicated lane. And each parameter also has independent setting for the linked loop. So you can have some parameters be looping within the clip itself, and you can have some that are synchronized and looping globally. So for example, let me open Redux and maybe Echo. So now I can add some global modulation. So for example, we can click on the, the sample rate here and I can go and draw some values there. Right click here, add a sine wave. Maybe we'll move a bit of that, duplicate this part here. Maybe this part will expand. And then let's bring this down here and maybe we can control the rate of our echo here and that'll also be synchronized really going crazy. And then I have two returns here, one for reverb and one for a global delay. So I'm going to set my reverb return value here. And then maybe we'll bring up the reverb really quickly and then shut it down here.
And while all this is happening, you can go in the clip properties themselves. And here I can go to Redux and then maybe set my sample right here. I know I'm going to do an independent loop here. Maybe add a sine wave, maybe duplicate this a few times. And I'm going to set the independent loop point here and then maybe we'll scale this down. Actually, this zone is much bigger than I thought it would be. So I'm going to make this shorter and then maybe we're going to just squeeze all this inside the zone here. And similarly, as the arrangement view, you can clear automation by hitting command backspace or you can right click and do clear all envelopes if you want to clear every single one. All right, so I'm going to reset things to default. I'm going to get rid of the plugins here. Just to show you another cool thing you can do is that in addition to modulating the different plugins that you have, you can modulate different clip properties as well. So depending on the different sampling mode you have here, for example, if I select beats, we unlock different kinds of things that we can modulate. So if I go up here to the clip section, you can see the different properties here. So in this case, we have a sample offset, which is super cool. This is the position where the sample will start and you can actually modulate this using different parameters. So for example, I can go crazy here. Uh, we can maybe add a sine wave here and you can probably already tell how crazy this is sounding right now. And another thing you can modulate is the transpositions. So you can change the actual note scale here. And again, let's add maybe a ramp up here. And again, we can unlink this so that we have an independent loop. So we can have this quick jittery loop running uh, independently of what's happening up here. And what's cool here is that you end up with these polyrhythms because this loop point has a different length than this one here. And what's cool about this looping clip property here is that since my clip is actually looped up here, I can select different regions of playback and this thing will run and loop almost independently from the main thing. And what's cool there is that you can actually swap out the audio file but keep the different clip properties and all the crazy automation. So for example, I can add a completely different beat on, on here. And if I remove all the envelopes, this is what the actual beat sound. So, so far I've been showing things in an audio track, but of course this works in MIDI and VST tracks as well. So I've loaded up a simple instance of analog and I'm just going to record a simple pattern here. So like before, if I want to modulate something, I hit A to go to automation. I select the parameters. So in this case, the cutoff frequency, and then I can just go here and maybe put a sine wave, triangle wave, and this kind of ramp down thing. And similarly, if I go to the clip itself, I can enable the envelopes here with this little button at the bottom. And same thing again, I can pick the cutoff frequency here and do a completely different sine wave here. And of course, this applies to all the other parameters. So you can click from the list here and you can see you have all the parameters you see in the synth itself. So you can almost think of this as like having a whole new set of envelopes and LFOs at your disposal and that you can make contextual to your track. So you're not stuck with just a looping LFO. You can maybe just add a quick sine wave somewhere in the middle of your track. All right. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned something new and you like this, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Also share the video with anyone who's learning Ableton Live. Let me know what your number one tips and uses of automation are in the comments below. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next.